This is Tristan with Victorious Games. Hello and welcome back. As you might have realized by now, I love creating extensions for GDevelop, the no-code, open-source game engine. I especially love creating extensions to manage the camera. I'll probably make a video that describes all the ways you can control the camera in GDevelop. But for this video, I'm going to demonstrate a brand new extension that I just added to GDevelop. This extension is called Edge Scrolling Camera and it will make it super simple to let your users control the camera by moving the mouse to the edge of the screen. Let me show you how easy it is to get this working in your project. Start with an empty project. Let's add a large object so we can see when the camera moves. Click Add a new object and click the filter button to expand the filter options. Drag the minimum pixel size up until only very large objects are displayed. Let's choose this graveyard sprite. Click Add to the scene and close. Now drag the new sprite onto the scene. As you can see, the viewable area will only cover around one-fourth of the image. Let's do a quick preview. Yup, the game is only showing the center part of that image. Now we are ready to install the Edge Scroll Camera extension. Click on Project Manager, Functions Behaviors, and Create or Search for New Extensions. Under Search Extensions, type Edge Scroll Camera. Click on the extension and choose Install in Project and then Close. Click on the Event Sheet tab. For the first event, add a condition called at the beginning of the scene and click OK. On that same event, add an action to enable camera edge scrolling. This is all that is required to get this working with default values. Let's test it with a preview. When I move my mouse to the edges of the screen, the camera on the base layer moves towards the edge that the mouse is near. This is working well, but what if we want to change how fast the camera moves, or where the scrolling is triggered? Let's go back to the event sheet. Add another action to the first event. The action is called Configure Camera Edge Scrolling. You can now select which layer this extension will move. By default it uses the base layer, but you can pick any layer. Keep in mind that this extension can only move one layer at a time. If you want multiple layers to move together, I will show a method to do this later in this video. Screen margin is used to specify how close, in pixels, the mouse cursor can get to the edge of screen before the camera scrolling is triggered. Let's set this to 100. Scroll speed is how fast the camera will move in pixels per second. Let's set this to 300. Style has a couple options that you can select. By default, this extension will use progressive speed. This means that the scroll speed will be based on how close the mouse is to the edge of the screen. This can be changed to constant speed if you want the camera to always move at the same speed. Before we do a preview, let's add something that will enable us to see where camera scrolling is triggered. Go to the scene editor and click add a new object and click the tab called new object from scratch. Select Shape Painter and name the object Draw Border. Change the outline color to red with a size of 4 pixels. Click Apply. Go back to the event sheet and create a new event without any conditions. This will make the actions run on every frame, which is around 60 times per second. Add the action Draw Edge Scrolling Screen Margin and select the Shape Painter you just created. You can pick a layer to draw on, I will just use the base layer. Click OK. Now, let's see what the preview looks like. We can now see a red rectangle near the edges of the screen. This visual indicator can be very useful when designing camera edge scrolling in your game. It especially helps to understand how the progressive speed works. The camera moves slowly when the user first crosses the border, but speeds up to the maximum scroll speed at the edge of the screen. One problem with this current game is that the user can move the camera wherever they want. In a real game, you usually want to control where the user can move the camera. Luckily, this is very simple to do. Let's add a new event without any conditions. Add an action called Enforce Camera Boundaries. You can choose the borders that make sense for your game, but for this example I'm just going to use the borders of the graveyard image. 
I'll use some of my favorite expressions which make it super easy to specify the outside edges of an object. Left will use bounding box left. Top will use bounding box top. Right will use bounding box right. And bottom will use bounding box bottom. Wow, I just realized how much fun it is to say bounding box bottom. Okay, back to work. Choose the base layer and camera zero. Now when we preview the game, you can see that camera scrolling works normally until it hits the edge of the graveyard image. Enforce camera boundaries is a very useful action and you will probably want to use it in many of your games that have a dynamic camera. One thing to keep in mind is that this action must be the last action that changes the camera. If you don't do this, another action could move the camera outside of the boundaries. I promised I would show you how to make the camera follow multiple layers. This can be done by installing the Copy Camera Settings extension. Once that is done, you just need to add an action for each layer that will follow the source layer. By the way, I added this event after the Enforce Camera Boundaries action so that the other layers will stay inside the same boundaries. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and say hello in the comments. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to this channel. Lastly, if you want to see what other cool things I'm working on, you can follow me at Victress Games on Twitter, or you are invited to come hang out with us in the Victress Games Discord server. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.